Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of the Sprites Alive tutorial. Today we're going to look at the Sprite Designer. Now we'll start off with a quick discussion of designing sprites for the CPC, how it uh, can be a little bit different to what you're expecting. Uh, specifically what we need to look out for is that in mode 0, which is where you get the nice 16 colors, you're only getting half the horizontal resolution. So that means that every pixel is going to be twice as wide as it is high. Okay, so what does that mean then? Now, let's imagine that we've designed this lovely little spaceship here. We can see it's fairly square. We've got a square sort of window there where the pilot will be looking out. Okay, we say, great, we've got our spaceship. We've got our rockets shooting out the back there. We know its dimensions. We'll copy it into the sprite designer, pixel by pixel. But when you actually look at it, on your CPC, it's going to be twice as wide, so <laughs> suddenly this is actually what the spaceship looks like. And so you're going to have to design for this aspect, you know, you say, well, okay, maybe I can make it a bit thinner, whatever. But the other thing is, what if you want your spaceship to be able to fly in different directions? So then we say, well, okay, we'll just rotate the thing and then copy that pixel by pixel. Well, now that's going to be twice as wide, but in the other direction. So you're going to have this spaceship which is going to be quite fat going one way and then it's going to be stretched out going the other way. It's like it's going through some sort of black hole or something. So what can we do instead? Well, luckily for us, Photoshop has pixel aspect correction. So when we make the new layer, uh, the, the new file here, we're going to say, you know, maybe 32 by 32 pixels is the maximum size you can do in Sprites Alive. Instead of saying square pixels that we're used to, we go all the way down to 2 to 1 and create. And so we can see even though it's got the same height and width in pixel terms, it's actually wider. And the individual pixels are going to be twice as wide. So if we say let's do a square, it's not really going to be square. We would have to make it twice as high, that sort of stuff. But then this is good because it means, for example, that you know, we could uh, get this and then copy that to a new layer. And then we say, well, now I want to rotate this. So we turn it around and you can see that it's actually going to rescale our graphic so that it'll fit within the same dimensions even though we've turned it around. So if we say let's make that 90 degrees. And so <clears throat> even though this looks like just a rotation of what we've already done there, it's actually completely different because it's doubled the pixels this way and then it's half pixels this way. But that means we can do things like this where we've got the spaceship going up and then over here we've got the spaceship going right, we can even do a diagonal where I've actually rotated one of these images and then I've gone through and cleaned up the pixels because they can get a bit wonky if you're just going to rotate them directly. And we can see here, this is the sprite sheet that I've used for my game. And in this case, so I've gone through and copied the initial vertical uh, sprite going up here pixel by pixel, but then to make it go down, I've gone through and changed the shading here so that it always seems to have that light source coming from the same direction. The same thing where it's going left and right. You can see where it's going right, it's a bit darker on the nose, whereas when it's going left, it's lighter on the nose. And that just gives it a little bit more of a, a realistic feel. Um, I haven't bothered to do that for the diagonal sprites uh, because they're already a little bit distorted anyway. And I don't think you notice it too much. But I think having just that little extra there is quite good. So yeah, anything that you want to do, I would recommend that you start in Photoshop. What we can do is, you can see here I've actually made a uh, palette for Photoshop using the specific colors that are available by default in Sprites Alive. And so then I can go through and say, well, I want to design you know, something like this. And that, you know, doesn't look that great, but, you know, when you put that onto your computer there, then 
it's going to get the, the realistic sort of shading that you want. Okay, so let's design a really simple little sprite here, and then we'll put that into the sprite designer so we can see how that would carry across. So I'll make a new layer here, and uh, let's see how big we'll make that. We could do that, say, maybe 8 pixels wide, and then we're actually going to make that 16 pixels high. Don't forget the pixel aspect ratio. And so that gives us a square canvas to work on. And because we're in Photoshop, you know, we can actually do something like this where we could say, let's make a blue circle. Okay. Oh, for some reason that's, uh, okay, so I'm just going to switch that to RGB color. Okay, I just want to make that maybe one pixel smaller, so that it'll fit. There we go. Okay, so we've got our little circle here. <clears throat> we can even do things like we could put some shading on that, so we could say, give that bevel and emboss, give it a light source, that sort of stuff. Okay, so we've applied a uh, bevel here, so we've got a bit of shading, but this is not going to work with the uh, 16 color palette. So what we can do is we can go image, mode, indexed color. That's going to drop us to 16 colors. Now we want to use a custom palette, we'll load, and we've got to use these swatches that we've got over on the right there, the Sprites Alive one. So we can see these are the standard colors in the Sprites Alive editor. Okay, so obviously the shading is a lot less smooth than what it was in a full kind of RGB sort of space there, but this is something that we can put into Sprites Alive and it's going to work perfectly well. And, and we can say you know, that maybe you don't want to have the white, maybe you want to use the light blue for that, that kind of stuff. You can still make some decisions around that, but otherwise... Let's go here, so we're just going to go side B of Sprites Alive in WinApe. <clears throat> and we can see the program is just called Design. So we'll go Run, Design. Now we'll ask you to insert a disk that you're going to be saving on. You could use a blank disk, or in this case, we'll use the one with the existing drawings. Okay, and you can see it's listed the files that I already created here. Alright, we just get some options here so we could edit a drawing which also means create a new drawing. View the drawings, so let's have a look at this. So we could just look at a few but we'll just say we want to see all the drawings and there we go, there's our sprite sheet. Animate the drawings is kind of an interesting one. So in this case, we could say we've got three different sprites here, or three different images set up for the ship going up. So we go to each one, press space, or press enter. Speed of sprite, we'll just say move it one pixel per frame. And we're going to move it up because it's facing up. Delay between moves. Uh, this one could be a little bit tricky, but I think say 20 should give us a good appearance of animation and we can see that this is what our sprite's going to look like animating between those and you could do things like uh, we could say ship up ship right ship down and then say ship left we'll just get it to animate and now it's just going to spin around so that's quite useful for check, checking your animation there disk operations is going to let you save and you could uh, load different files there 
So when you do this, the file that you save is going to have all of your sprites. You can't save and load individual sprites. The drawing editor. Uh, why is that different to editor drawing? Well, this is actually to uh, move around the drawings in the space that you've got here. So for example, you might say, I want to have this one move up to that point or you want to delete one that sort of stuff you could also copy an existing sprite so we can say well let's make 39 a copy of that one now we've got two that are the same and then we could do this uh, say if you want to do a second frame of animation so you could make a copy and then edit that sprite information let's just say do you want info on all drawings yes now you could actually print this if you're on an emulator you can print it to a text file I'll just say go to screen and this just gives you the dimensions of all your sprites. Uh, this could be useful if you're then using them in your programming because then you're going to know which numbers correspond to which things in the game. <clears throat> so alter the colors is where we've got our palette here. And then it's just giving you the option to change these colors. I'm not sure how it's showing us more than 16 colors at once here. I think it must be using some kind of special palette trickery. Now, um, number eight, create sprite data. This is something that you'll need to do when you want to actually put your sprites in the game. And it will give you a few warnings. What it, what it really means is that when it does this, I think it does a bit of moving things around in memory. And it means that the program has to halt after you've done it. So anything that you've edited, any sprites you've created, make sure that you go to disk operations and save first. Then go to create sprite data. Now we know that our last sprite was number 39. Okay. Yep. So... Let's make a new one. We'll put that in number 40. Okay, 40. Now, dimensions. It says coordinates. It means dimensions. So we know from Photoshop it's 8. Enter. 16. Enter. And your inscriptions is going to be ball. All right, and now we've got a fairly simple graphics editor here. So we can see if we just uh, look at the 16 colors up here and they're just numbered and then letters so it's a hex notation and that just means if you press whichever number or letter it is then that's what you're going to get <clears throat> so looking at our sprite in photoshop i can see that we're going to have three black pixels and then two light blue ones a white one here, white is number nine. Okay, there we go. Now we've got our ball. And to get out of here, we can then press escape. And escape is going to give you various options. These F keys are the numeric keys. And so we could do things like you could rename it. Uh, you can copy it, which is kind of useful. So if you want to move this to another one, so we could say drawing number 41. We're now on drawing number 41 rename this to ball2 and what do we want to do with this well movement number seven <clears throat> is kind of useful this means that we could mirror or invert it so make it upside down so now we've got two versions of the ball one of which is rotated from the other one <clears throat> you can't do <coughs> you can't do a straight 90 degree rotation for the reasons that we looked at earlier there where the pixel aspect is going to be all wrong okay so we're just going to say nine for main menu 
and then we would go create sprite data. Do you wish to continue? Yes, now I'm just going to open up here so we can see our file. What are we going to call it? Let's call it ball. And you can see now that the computer says you've got to reset it because uh, the program's not going to continue running after this. But if we go to our disk here, we can see now there is a DRW file called ball. And if we then were to load this into our Sprites Alive game, then we could access the ball sprite as well as all the other sprites that were there earlier. Okay, that's really all we need to know about the Sprite Designer. And next time we'll look at putting these sprites into a simple game.